Welcome to It's Your Ego, Stupid, a show lovingly intended for millions of spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people like you who may at times be led into ego stupidity, a lesser version of yourself and a lesser version of life. This show will give you a much deeper understanding of what ego is, what it's doing to your life, how it can weaken your human and spiritual wellness, and how you can heal in each of these areas if needed. It's Your Ego, Stupid will heighten your awareness of the intense link between your ego and spirit, your humanity and divinity, and the synergy that can lead to the best version of you and your life. Your host is Dr. Nick Martin a licensed psychologist who has worked in the clinical, university, school, and private practice settings over the past 40 years, while serving as a therapist, diagnostician, educator, and consultant. Welcome again to It's Your Ego, Stupid, and now your host, Dr. Nick Martin. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Nick Martin, also known by some as Ego Man, due to my intense focus on ego and how it's impacting our lives both humanly and spiritually. I want to thank you for listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. I hope you've had a great week as you go about meeting the many important challenges that we all face, which during today's show will have us looking at how lower ego vulnerability contributes to difficulty in managing the various kinds of adversity we are called on to manage in our life. These are the inevitable failures, losses, and mistakes that we can make owing to the imperfection of our humanity. Yes, as hard as that may seem for some to believe, particularly those with lower ego vulnerability, we are all imperfect. One of the broader lessons I've learned from you is how important it is to handle these things so that one can do a lot more winning in life rather than losing. Losers never seem to learn from their mistakes, partly because they don't know they're losing when they're losing. They often make the same mistakes over and over and over again, despite being fairly smart people. People whose ego energy is imbalanced, whether it's power, flexibility, or vulnerability related, are often doing a lot more losing than winning in life. A lot of the time, they don't even realize this is happening, particularly in relationships, until it's too late. They miss a lot of or misunderstand their mistakes, their failings and losses that are taking place, from which to learn and make things better. They are kind of a disabled learner in the part of life that involves fixing things when they go wrong. Their ego energy has disguised what is taking place when they are losing or failing at work or in relationships, in social settings or social groups, at tasks, in their health, in general, at life. Speaking for myself, I've thankfully been ultimately successful within the academic, professional, financial, marital, familial, athletic, and health-related aspects of my life. And that success has been heavily influenced by my willingness to learn and to recognize my mistakes, of which there have been many, sooner rather than later. Unfortunately, for those with lower ego vulnerability, the focus of our program today, They often approach these happenings all too often with emotional detachment from what is taking place, particularly an absence of guilt, which can serve as an emotional cue to recognize a particular failure, mistake, or loss, including the bigger ones. The absence of emotion weakens their ability to understand the cause of problems their level of responsibility in having caused them as well as fixing them and the kinds of solutions that are needed. A lot of the time they are oblivious to their failings, which in turn affects their ability to learn from their mistakes. You can't own and work on fixing your mistakes if you don't realize they are happening, which is something that's often occurring for those with lower ego vulnerability. 
But before we go more deeply into that focus, I do want to mention that It's Your Ego, Stupid is a program for spiritual, intelligent, and imperfect people, just like you and me, who may at times be led by our ego into something I call ego stupidity, a lesser version of ourselves, and often a lesser version of life. Ego stupidity, rooted in ego energy, affecting relationships with our family, our friends and co-workers, and even with ourselves, which could stand some improvement, maybe a lot of improvement. Ego stupidity, rooted in ego energy, impacting our efforts to achieve, to use our potential, to recognize the service in what we are doing, and experiencing a sense of meaning connected to our life's work. Ego stupidity, if affecting our ability to deal effectively with all of the changes, adversity, stressors, and conflicts taking place in our life, often leading to their managing us rather than our managing them. Ego stupidity, making it difficult to grow our mind with truth, while keeping us stuck in faulty beliefs, values, attitudes, and prejudices, with many acquired nowadays from unfiltered social media, fake news on the internet, and opinion news on TV, masquerading as truth, and often suggesting that truth doesn't really matter anymore. Ego stupidity, making it difficult to feel genuine, lasting happiness, while often leading us into unnecessary anxiety, anger, guilt, sadness, or fake happiness being substituted for the real thing. And finally, ego stupidity impacting our spiritual wellness and ability to be the love, the life, and the energy God is in our daily thoughts, words, and deeds. In short, impacting our ability to be our divinity in our daily life. As you can see, there are lots of important places that ego stupidity can make its appearance in our lives, the source of which is the nature of our ego energy. If things aren't going as well as you'd like in any of these areas, you've come to the right place because a lot of what's going wrong has nothing to do with our intelligence, has nothing to do with the absence of spirituality, because we all have the love, life, and energy God is built into our being, or mental instability, and has a lot more to do with our ego energy, serving as the fuel for ego stupidity. Your, li your lives, relationships, and experiences have taught me all of that over the past 40 years, and what I'm sharing with you in my website, my books, and my shows about ego energy and ego stupidity and how we can heal it with ego medicine when and where needed. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in to It's Your Ego Stupid on Own Times Radio. During today's show, we'll be looking at the impact that lower vulnerability has on the way a person deals, or more accurately, fails to deal, with the inevitable failures, losses, or mistakes, large or small, significant or insignificant, that happen in their life. But particularly the bigger ones, where most damage is being done. As a quick review, people with lower ego vulnerability are experiencing a reduced or even absent sense of their human vulnerability. They are out of touch with their humanity in that they often fail to recognize the weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity that are playing out in their daily life, in their failings. They also have a harder time seeing them because they are not, but not because they're being defensive or they're trying to hide from them, their difficulty recognizing them has a lot more to do with their emotional functioning. Emotions play a very important role in calling attention to our behavior and looking more closely to what's taking place, particularly when things have gone wrong and 
the need to fix things. In the case of people with lower ego vulnerability, they often don't experience emotions such as fear, anger, love, and guilt to the degree necessary to call attention to what is happening. So they live their lives at a distance from the truly imperfect person they are, and that we all are. Now, most of us are getting those healthy emotional cues, while they aren't getting them. And this leads to the ego blindness that is often taking place when people are experiencing unhealthy, imbalanced ego energy involving lower ego vulnerability. So they have trouble seeing the failures that are occurring, be they at work or in relationships. Perhaps they involve their health or finances. They also have trouble owning their share of responsibility for having contributed to them. They have trouble owning their share of responsibility for fixing them. And they have trouble learning what they can do to fix them because they're not motivated to learn about and solve a failing that they often don't realize they have. Our jails are filled with people who have experienced these difficulties who have trouble experiencing guilt and remorse to the degree that would motivate them to make the necessary changes to keep them from going back into them, the repeat offenders. Now, I know there are other significant, significant causes of recidivism, like a legal system that can be stacked against a person getting into the system, who has gotten into the system, but lower ego vulnerability is still playing its role. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Well, there are millions of people experiencing these difficulties because there are billions of people on the planet and every one of them has an ego, just like you and me. Some of them are living in the roles such as the sociopath, the sadist, and the inattentive person that I talk about in my book, The Two Voices Within. I want you to take a look to see if you, or a loved one, is experiencing any of the symptoms, ego stupidity, and ego impact on spiritual wellness I'll be talking about today. I want you to diagnose you, because you're the only one living you, 24-7. Now we're going to take a look at some of the symptoms which indicate if a lower ego vulnerability voice is talking to and through you in your life, when confronted with your failures, losses, and mistakes, your humanity. And here's the first symptom. You have difficulty learning from your failures, losses, and mistakes. Something I've mentioned earlier, difficulty learning from these occurrences that happen in everybody's life. People with lower ego vulnerability repeat making the same kinds of mistakes over and over again. So it's not just about having made a mistake. That's something we all do. It's the idea that they keep happening again and again and again. Here are some questions to connect you up to that symptom. How deeply do your failings register with you emotionally? How deeply can the emotion, the kinds of emotions I mentioned earlier, whether it's anxiety or fear or love or guilt, how much of that emotion are you able to feel? People with lower vulnerability have a very difficult time experiencing these kinds of emotions when they've made mistakes or failed. Is guilt a difficult emotion for you to experience? You know, guilt can be a very important and healthy emotion in, it, in its proper place at the proper time to cue us that there's something that's wrong, something we may be done wrong that we need to own and take responsibility for. People with lower vulnerability have difficulty experiencing that emotion. Do you have difficulty hearing other people when they point them out? So even when others are trying to draw your attention to the mistake that you're responsible for, you have difficulty hearing them giving you this kind of information, this kind of feedback. 
And is your guilt level very low and very short? Uh, I sometimes refer to this as shallow guilt. The guilt is at a very low level. Maybe it's a one hour or a two on a 10 point scale, very low. And also very short. When you experience the guilt, it's what I call short-lived guilt. It's very brief, maybe only a few seconds or a minute, but then it goes away. When you think about these questions and the symptom that I've just referred to, does this sound familiar to you? I'm going to go on to the next symptom. You overestimate your successes while underestimating your failures, mistakes, and losses, which are often remaining hidden from you. People with lower vulnerability are prone to find and see quite well what they've done right. And they have done some things right, maybe, maybe a lot of right things, but they tend to overlook or ignore or minimize what they have done wrong. So there's sort of an imbalance towards seeing the good stuff and overlooking or missing the quote bad stuff. Uh, some questions, their successes or perceived success is really hiding their failure. So a lot of times if they are being successful, this is causing them to miss, maybe overlook their failures. Some other questions, do you have difficulty recognizing what you have done wrong. Uh, people with lower vulnerability have that difficulty, rec failing to recognize what they've done wrong, even to the point where they begin to think, I can do no wrong. So there's nothing that they feel they've done anything wrong. Also, do you have difficulty recognizing your weaknesses? Again, people with lower vulnerability may focus a lot on their strengths and have a difficult time recognizing their weaknesses. Also, do you think people only really notice your good qualities? And you do have good qualities, and we're not saying that doesn't exist. But the weaker qualities, do you have an ability to realize they can also see them? Sometimes people with lower vulnerability often think that people love them. And that's not due to a narcissistic kind of thing that higher ego power people often get into, but just that they see all these wonderful positive qualities and see none of the negative stuff. And also, do you think there's nothing, quote, bad or weak for people to see? So that you work with this idea that there's really nothing negative for them to see. Now, in response to that, I would say people often do see it. You just don't know that they see it. I'm going to take one, talk about one more symptom before we go to our first break. You have difficulty hearing people who are constructively trying to point out your failures, losses, or mistakes. Again, you don't hear people very well who may be trying to be constructive and trying to point these things out. And they can be a teacher or a coach, maybe a supervisor or a spouse or partner who is trying to get through to you, but they seem to be unable to do that. People with lower vulnerability, they lack the motivation to take seriously what well-intended and experienced people are trying to tell them. So this lack of motivation is getting in the way of them really truly listening and taking in what these people are trying to tell them. And here are some questions that to think about regarding this. Do you feel there is no need to listen to them? I don't have to listen to them because they don't really have anything to offer me about what's wrong with me because there's nothing wrong with me or nothing needs to be improved. Or do you dismiss them as not really knowing what they're talking about? And that Because there's no need for improvement that I can tune them out and say they don't really have anything to offer me. Or do you only want to listen to those telling you good things about you. People with lower vulnerability enjoy listening to people telling them what's good about them. Uh, it's arousal. It's stimulating that they enjoy. And also, does your friendship circle only involve those people who are in that uh, way of being with you? That is, they will tell you what is positive or good about you while overlooking any of the weaknesses fa or failings that they can see. So when you think about these questions and the symptoms, does any of that sound familiar to you? We're coming up on our first break. When we return, we'll be talking about reflections of ego stupidity. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. 
and I'll see you after the break. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Ohm Times. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, Dr. Nick Martin here. I want to invite you to visit my website, egoandspirit.info, where you can find lots of information on ego and download your free ebook copy of It's Your Ego Stupid. Fix it to fix your life. Also, please visit the shop page where you can find each of my other books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, and The Two Voices Within. Coping 19, brought to you by CDC and the Ad Council. If you're feeling increasingly lonely right now, you're not alone. It's totally normal. Even though we may not be able to get together in person, connecting virtually with friends and family still gives you a chance to interact with people and may help raise your spirits. Join a virtual book club, set up group text chats, or online video coffee breaks with coworkers. Find more self-care and coping tips at coping-19.org. Welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to be taking a look at reflections of ego stupidity and when it's happening in a lower ego vulnerability person's difficulties in dealing with adversity, their humanity, and their feelings. Some may seem strange or weird, maybe wrong, funny, or inappropriate. But that's because you're not living in that energy. But for those with lower vulnerability, it's leading them to engage in ego-rooted, non-reality-based, truth-disconnected thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, affecting their ability to work with their failures, losses, and mistakes due to a lacking sense of healthy human vulnerability, a healthy sense of their imperfection, and difficulty with recognizing their weaknesses and imperfections, their humanity. It often leads them to conclude that the abnormal things that they think or feel or do are normal when confronted with their failings. But unlike the, but like the symptoms, they become their abnormal normal that they don't realize they're caught up in. But others often can because they're not looking at them through the same ego energy prism or filter that the lower vulnerability person is looking through to see what's taking place in their efforts to deal with adversity. They're intelligent, spiritual, imperfect, and mentally stable people, but they've gotten caught up in the web of an abnormal world of their own making due to their unhealthy, imbalanced lower vulnerability energy. And they can remain stuck there until they heal the energy, leading them to the symptoms and ego stupidity that's happening in their life. And they can do this with the use of ego medicine, consisting of understanding what ego is and isn't, coming into an awareness that ego is an energy at work in their life and everyone's life. It's energy that's used to help us to survive, but unfortunately, gets us away from actually living. And it's also not involved in things that people often see it as being, meaning that your ego doesn't have an intellect. It doesn't have an awareness of itself or you or God, uh, what role it's really playing in your life, because it's just an energy. 
and also coming to understand that your ego doesn't have an intentional quality, something often portrayed in various writings I've seen, which take us away from understanding what ego is really doing. Ego doesn't operate with any intentions because it doesn't have an awareness upon which to form the intentions that are being ascribed to it by some writers. Also, the second part of ego medicine is learning to tune into your ego energy, tuning into the amount or the volume, as I refer to it, of the power, the flexibility, and the vulnerability at work in your ego energy. And this is something that I assist you with doing via my books, my website, and this podcast. And also, one more ingredient to ego medicine is being able to replace ego-rooted, non-reality-based, truth-disconnected thoughts and beliefs that we created. Ego did not create them. We built them upon the energy that is flowing in our mind. And we replace them with those which are connected to truth and reality, both human and divine. So the next part of our program today deals specifically with this third contributor to ego medicine, which involves looking at reflections of ego stupidity for the disconnection from reality. These are the kinds of inaccurate, illogical, or irrational thoughts that people with low ego vulnerability often bring into their efforts to work with problems or not work with them, as well as any of their failings and their humanity. So here's the first reflection. I don't need to listen to others because I am doing so well. People with lower ego vulnerability are not motivated or inclined to listen to other people because they don't think there's anything they need to listen to them for. And this can be a non-reality based thought because oftentimes for people living in this energy, there are lots of things going wrong that they're not aware of. Uh, So they have a difficult time listening to others for guidance or improvement. And this is ego stupidity that often feeds into additional ego stupidity that begins to happen, such as, I'm doing better than others are doing, and oftentimes that others means everybody. So there's this strong overestimation of how well they are doing when compared to others, which often can be out of touch with reality when you look at what's taking place in relationships, at work, in their health, and other aspects of life. I also may get into thinking that people should be listening to me because I'm doing so well. Again, This is non-reality-based thinking because these people are often leaving out the failures and the losses and mistakes taking place in their life. So they may not be the best person for others to follow due to their own failure to address what's going wrong in their life. And also, the thought that may happen is that people can't help me to learn and grow. People with lower ego vulnerability don't really want to listen to other people. They don't see them as being having anything to add to their lives and what they can be doing better because they don't feel there is a need for improvement. So when your lower ego vulnerability is healing, you begin to realize that you may need to listen more to people at times so that you can see more of what's going on that is less well. But until then, when you're thinking that you don't really need to listen to others because you are doing so well in your life and all the rest of what I've just shared with you, well, that's your ego making you stupid. I'm going to go on to another reflection. I am doing a lot more winning in life than losing. People with lower vulnerability have a difficult time keeping score in the game of life. They often think they're doing a lot more winning than actually losing. The losing is kind of hidden from them by the nature of their ego energy. They are not seeing the losses or mistakes they're making inside of relationships or within their work situation and other aspects of life. Uh, And this is ego stupidity that can lead into or feed into additional ego stupidity that also begins to happen. For example, I'm not damaging or hurting relationships. The person with lower vulnerability has no clue 
that they actually may be doing a lot of harm and damage to relationships, a lot of times due to their insensitive nature or their reckless nature, their impulsive nature. They're really having a lot more impact than they can actually see. Or that I'm not screwing up at work. People with lower ego vulnerability may miss all the challenges and mistakes that may be taking place. These individuals can often be lazy because they're less motivated to do things unless they're things that really appeal to them. They are more into doing what they want to do rather than what they have to do. And another area that where ego stupidity can be happening is I'm not weakening my health. I'm not weakening my health. People with lower vulnerability can often be pleasure seekers, and they look for pleasure-based happiness, uh, physiological things that can often lead to addiction. It's just one area that can be being uh, taking place in order to experience more increased levels of arousal and excitement and stimulation that they often want, that sometimes life at its normal pace doesn't often offer immediately. So they in a way, take control of that by gravitating to these kind of things. When your lower vulnerability is healing, you begin to realize that there have been some important areas of loss that have been going on that you haven't been seeing that's taking place. But until then, when you're thinking that you're doing a lot more winning in life than losing and all of the rest of what I've just shared with you, well, that's your ego making you stupid. I'm going to move on to one more reflection. My failures, losses, and mistakes are not affecting other people, not affecting others. People with low vulnerability, they often lack empathy and compassion due to the emotional absence needed to notice the effect they are having on others or to even care about it if they do notice it. This is something that's going on often for for those with lower ego vulnerability. And this is non-reality based thinking because they are actually having some significant impact upon others. And this is ego stupidity that can get into into additional areas of ego stupidity, such as I can get away with being a jerk or an idiot because it's not affecting others. So they sometimes think that their impact upon others is relatively minimal when it's not. That's a non-reality based thought. They are affecting other people, whether it's their spouse or co-workers or teammates, whatever. Uh, also, the people don't care if I'm being a jerk or an idiot. You know, it doesn't seem to, they think it matters to them or to other people that they don't really care about their being, who they are being. And also that I don't need to work on myself because it doesn't really matter how I am being. So this is the person who you probably don't want to bother giving a self-improvement book because they don't think they need it. They don't want to work on self-improvement. When your lower vulnerability is healing, you begin to realize the kinds of impact that maybe you're having on others when you're failing or losing or making mistakes that can be of a direct or maybe an indirect nature connected to others. But until then, when you're thinking that and all of the rest, well, That's your ego making you stupid. We're going to move on, Tal, to talk about some ego insights. These are specific insights connected to the symptoms and the ego stupidity I've been talking about. They're insights that can help you to better see what's going on behind the scenes and beneath the surface when it comes to difficulty in dealing with adversity and one's failings for those with lower ego vulnerability. These are insights that can help you to see more of your ego blindness if you're experiencing that energy and what ego is actually doing when it comes to difficulties. And here they are. Your lower ego vulnerability voice and difficulty in recognizing the weaknesses, imperfection, and vulnerability of your humanity are impacting your ability to notice the losses and failures and mistakes that you're making. And your weakness in seeing your failures, losses, and mistakes is like a mirror to the distance you're keeping from your humanity. So the more of these that you're overlooking or missing, the greater the distance from your humanity that's taking place. And it often can lay the foundation for becoming inhumane to others. It's also leading you away from seeing all of who you are truly being. So your a lack of awareness of yourself is very is very evident. 
and also that there are healthy amounts of emotions such as anger, guilt, and anxiety, as well as love, that can come forth as you become recognition, uh, recognizing more of your humanity that can take place. When you awaken and are more conscious of your lower ego vulnerability, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. Another insight, your lower vulnerability and distance from your humanity is leading you to a distorted perspective involving the actual failure, losses, and mistakes that have happened. It's leading you to see yourself in a distorted, positive light rather than the realistic light of truth. And it's leading you away from seeing the frequency, the size, and the significance of your failings. As I said, overestimating the positive and missing the more negative areas that need to be worked on. And it's leading you away from seeing the harmful impact that you have had on others. You're having a tremendous impact upon others that you're lacking in awareness of. And it's leading you away from realizing how much you have to learn about your humanity. So there is so much more for you to learn and understand about your humanity that you're unable to realize. When you awaken and are more conscious of your lower ego vulnerability, you're, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. I'm going to talk about one more insight. Your lower vulnerability voice through the energy and the distance from your humanity is leading you to be unmotivated to manage your failures, losses, and mistakes. There's an absence of motivation it pushing you in the direction of trying to work on gaining understanding and insight and improvement in these areas. It's leading you to lack the emotional fuel to learn and grow from them. So we can use anxiety, we can use guilt, we can use love to learn and grow from the things that we're doing that we need to work on. And it's leading you to think that such an effort would be a waste of time as you have nothing to learn. So this energy is pushing you in the direction of concluding that there really isn't anything to be worked on. I don't need to change anything. I am the best version of myself that I can be. And I don't have anything to listen to or learn from people or from self-improvement sources of different kinds. And it's also leading you to repeat the same failings again and again because your humanity and reality will prevail. So in spite of your distance in your awareness of who you're being, the humanity, the imperfection that we all possess, the weaknesses, the vulnerability will still emerge and reality will prevail. When you awaken and are more conscious of your lower ego vulnerability, you'll be able to see and realize all of this. We're coming up on our second break. When we return, we'll be looking at ego's impact on our spiritual wellness. This is Dr. Nick. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio. And I'll see you after the break. The Real Conscious Connection. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Imagine yourself being transported to India, to the banks of the Ganga, and an ashram in Rishikesh. Visualize that you are welcome to satsang with an American sannyasi who shares the wisdom of her guru. Your visualization has manifested. Join Sattvi Bhagawati Saraswati for inspiration and transformation every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. If I could be you... And you could be me for just one hour. If you could find a way to get inside each other's mind. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a mile, mile in, in my, my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out. And for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes.
welcome back. You're listening to It's Your Ego Stupid on Ohm Times Radio, a show for intelligent, spiritual, and imperfect people, just like you and me. Now we're going to take a look at how lower ego vulnerability can impact our spiritual wellness when it comes to dealing with adversity and one's failings. We're looking at ego's impact on the connection to the divinity within our humanity. The God within each of our being, which is one of the divine gifts that we've all been given. What makes us all spiritual beings. The lessening of our spiritual wellness involves gaining distance from being the love, the life and the energy God is within our thoughts, words and deeds. When ego is getting in the way of working with the failures, losses and mistakes that are taking place in our life. Each of these can be undermining our spiritual wellness by distancing us from God, the God within us, our divinity. Here are some examples of ego's impact on spiritual wellness for those with lower ego vulnerability who are failing to be their divinity. And we'll get started with ego's impact on being the love God is when dealing with adversity. People with lower ego vulnerability have difficulty being spiritually well when a lack of recognition of their humanity, their weaknesses and imperfections, weakens their efforts to manage their failings with unconditional, connective, unburdened, and unlimited love. Your divinity involves fully knowing your humanity, your weaknesses, and your imperfections in order to manage the inevitable failures taking place in your life. When your lower ego vulnerability and a lack of recognition of your weaknesses, imperfections, and humanity prevents you from lovingly working with all of the adversity and failing that life will bring forth, you're not able to be the unconditional love God is in managing these important life challenges. We must bring unconditional love and the ability to know ourselves fully, even as we grow, to our efforts to manage the failure life brings to us. It can allow us to learn what we must learn, from whom we must learn it, be it ourselves or others, in order to manage and heal from our failings. When your lower vulnerability and a lack of recognition of your weaknesses, imperfections, and humanity weakens meeting and embracing life's adversities with love. In the light of your humanity, you're not able to be the connective love God is. We must lovingly be connected to our failures, losses, and mistakes with the recognition of the weaknesses and imperfections of our humanity so that we are led to learn what must be learned and from whom it must be learned in order to manage and heal from our failings. When your lower vulnerability and a lack of recognition of your weaknesses, imperfections, and humanity are burdening you with the absence of love in working with your failings, you're not able to be the unburdened love God is. We must know, accept, and manage our failings with openness to our humanity and freely flowing love towards it in order to learn from them, manage them, and heal them. When your lower vulnerability and a lack of recognition of your weaknesses, imperfections, and humanity are limiting the amount of love that you can bring to working to understand and manage your failings, you're not able to be the unlimited love God is. The embrace of the imperfections of our humanity with unlimited love will open the door to learning what is known from within or unknown and from what others can help us to know in order to manage and heal our failings. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality or less spiritually well and failing to be your divinity. Next, we'll take a look at the impact of ego on being the life God is when dealing with adversity. 
People with lower ego vulnerability have difficulty being spiritually well when a lack of recognition of the weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity is leading them to dishonor and disrespect the essence of their humanity being revealed in their failings. Your divinity involves welcoming, honoring, and respecting the service that you can render to yourself within the recognition and acceptance of your humanity so that you can work with and heal what has been brought forth by your failings. When your lower vulnerability and ignorance of the weaknesses and imperfections of your humanity are leading you to dishonor and disrespect yourself in working with your failings, you're not being the life God is. The embrace of our humanity will bring us to work with honor and respect in learning from ourselves what must be learned and healing what must be healed in dealing with our failures. When your lower vulnerability and the ignorance of weaknesses and imperfections of your humanity are leading you to dishonor and disrespect yourself with detachment from your failings. You're not being the life God is. The recognition and acknowledgement of our weaknesses, imperfections, and humanity with humility will allow us to honor and respect our humanity as we work to manage and heal our failings. When your lower vulnerability and ignorance of the weaknesses and imperfections of your humanity are leading you to dishonor and disrespect yourself with full celebration of their absence. You're not being the life God is. The embrace of ourselves with abandonment of this illusion will allow us to work with honor and respect as we manage and heal our failings. When your lower vulnerability and ignorance of the weaknesses and imperfections of your humanity are leading you to dishonor and disrespect yourself with detachment from responsibility for the failures you've encountered, you're not being the life God is. The embrace of ourselves with a greater sense of ownership and responsibility for these failings will allow us to work with honor and respect for ourselves as we work to manage and heal these failings. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality, are less spiritually well, and failing to be your divinity in which any adversity can be managed and healed. Last, we're going to take a look at being the energy God is and ego's impact on it when dealing with adversity. This involves being able to access healing and transformative energy designed into your being to naturally occur when you're connected to human and divine truth. This is a capacity that's three million years in the making just as all of the other wondrous things that we have been endowed with due to the wisdom of the ages and evolution. This is a capacity rooted in our common source, be it known by you as God, Allah, Yahweh, Vishnu, Great Spirit, Source, or another I have failed to mention. People with lower ego vulnerability who are ignorant of the weaknesses and imperfections of their humanity have difficulty being spiritually well when failing to manage adversity within the light of truth and understanding that can be found when they are not being blinded by detachment from their humanity. Our divinity involves healing and transformation in which we are willing to work with and manage failings by seeking the truth and understanding 
that can be found when it is not being obscured by ignorance of the weaknesses and imperfection of our humanity. A distance being created by failing to know our humanity and the impact ego is having on this. It involves healing and transformation in which we are taking responsibility for seeking truth and understanding about our failures, losses, and mistakes that is unencumbered by rejecting the truth of our humanity through ignorance of it. When our lower ego vulnerability and ignorance of your humanity is keeping you from knowing the truth and understanding about why failure is and has happened in your life, you're not being the energy God is in working with it. The increasing awareness of our vulnerability and recognition of our humanity will open the door to deeper truth and understanding of the sources and contributors to the failings taking place in our life and the ability to look wherever needed, including at ourselves when necessary, in order to find the answers and truth that we seek. When lower ego vulnerability and ignorance of your humanity is keeping you from knowing truth and understanding about the ownership and responsibility for the failings occurring in your life, you're not being the energy God is. The increasing awareness of our vulnerability and recognition of our humanity will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of the weaknesses and imperfection within us in order to better understand what must we must own. When lower vulnerability and ignorance of your humanity is keeping you from knowing truth and understanding about the solutions for your failing, you're not being the energy God is. The increasing of our vulnerability and recognition of our humanity will open the door to a deeper truth and understanding of the solutions and answers to our failings in order to manage and heal them. When ego is getting in the way and all of this is happening, you're gaining distance from your spirituality or less spiritually well and failing to be your divinity. As we leave our focus on ego's impact on our spiritual wellness, please know that we often make God and our connection to God and others so much harder than it has to be. And this is what happens when unhealthy ego energy is getting in between us. God and life and we become so much better and so much easier when we remove that obstacle with ego medicine. As we leave our focus on lower ego vulnerability and difficulty working with adversity in one's life, give some thought to the symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, and spiritual impact I've shared with you. I hope what I've shared with you today will serve as a dose of ego medicine. And if any of it resonates with you, please help me to share it with others. I want to mention before leaving that you can purchase each of my books, Ego Therapy, Ego Spiritualism, The Two Voices Within, and It's Your Ego Stupid at the online bookstores for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Balboa Press. You can also purchase Focused Ego Meditations on the shop page of my website, egoandspirit.info, which can help you to know when you are truly speaking with your voice in your life and not egos. As you go about healing your ego energy, we're needed in its power, flexibility, or vulnerability. I end today's show with this message. The great news is that working to heal your ego energy using ego medicine by growing your awareness of its symptoms, ego stupidity, insights, 
and spiritual impact will allow the divine truth in your being to flow and shine through you and allow you to fully embrace each of the divine gifts. The spiritual part of healing is a given. It's part of your endowment. Divine truth and the divine gifts are part of your heritage that already exists within you. You need do nothing more to be spiritual because you already are. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. You only need to enhance your humanity with ego medicine so that all which is available to you is given. Fix your ego to fix your life, humanly and spiritually. I want to thank you for listening and allowing me to be your servant. Please have a great week and do come back to my next program. In peace and love, this is Dr. Nick saying goodbye for now.